when we talk about beauty we talk about waves today i'm going to teach you these beautiful things we call waves so what is a wave wave is a disturbance wave is a disturbance that carries energy that carries energy from one location to the other location now how can you create waves well for example take this slinky so by moving it up and down you create a wave meaning the disturbance that carries energy from one location to the other location we're going to talk about three types of waves today so what are the difference between waves and pulse so this is you take a rope and you move it up and down once you create a pulse so this is just one pulse on a rope this is just one pulse on a rope this is t1 t2 t3 what does that mean this is one pulse on a rope at different time so this is pulse now how can you create wave so you create wave by continuously creating pulse by using a rope for example you hold a rope and move and move up and down forever that means you creating continuous pulse and there is another name for it and we call it waves we're going to talk about three types of wave right now standing wave all right so what is a mechanical wave mechanical waves in this medium you need a medium to move the information or energy from one location to the another location so yes you need medium the em waves you don't need medium so but it also works in a vacuum what is em waves em waves is the light it can carries information in the vacuum or it can carries the energy in the vacuum standing waves needs medium all right so now we're going to talk about two types of mechanical waves one is we call transversal and one is longitudinal all right so transversal the particles oscillate perpendicular with respect to the direction of the waves perpendicular on longitudinal the particle the particle when you for example when you move a slinky back and forth the particles in the slinky oscillate parallel with respect to the direction of the waves transversal an example of transversal waves are water wave an example of longitudinal waves are for example the sound wave right now let's talk about the vacuum and 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 the no medium the transversal waves look like so this is an example of transversal wave how many cycle here let's make a comparison one point and come back to that point how many cycle one what is the wavelength also one if i cut that by your scissor and if i move it up and down just once it creates web like this so how many cycle here still one what is the wavelength still one making connection we call this one crest and this one trap all right so now we're gonna draw a transversal wave with more than one cycle l m so how many cycle i have one two three cycle what does that mean so let's start from a to e is a cycle a to e a e is a cycle which is equivalent to bf which is equivalent to c g which is equivalent to d h which is equivalent to e i which is equivalent to f j 
which is equivalent to GK, which is equivalent to HL, and which is equivalent to I and N. I and N. We have three cycles, and these all are equivalent to each other. All right, a few other things is amplitude. So, this is what we call amplitude from the equilibrium to the max height, which is the amplitude. So, this is the amplitude. All right, so how many amplitude do we have? This is also amplitude. This is also am amplitude. So, how many amplitude do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. All together, six amplitude in three cycle. All right. So this is transversal wave. Now we're going to talk about longitudinal wave. Put a point over here. Put a point over here, and put a point over here. Unless, of course, this one. What do we call it? A uh, rare fraction. This one, what do we call it? Condensation. So, how can we measure the wavelength? Let's call this one A, let's call this one B, let's call this one C, let's call this one E. Alright, so how many wavelength we have? Let's see. From A to C is the wavelength, which is equivalent to B to D, which is equivalent to C to E. And that's it. So we have wavelength. This is the wavelength. We have one wavelength. We have we have we have, we have so how many cycle there is? There are two cycle. What is the how many wavelength? There are two wavelength. When electromagnetic waves moves in a vacuum, what is the equation? Equation is velocity is C over N. When electromagnetic waves moves in a medium, what, do we, what is the equation? Velocity is C over N. What does N for vacuum is 1 and index of uh, refraction for water is 1.33. Understand that vacuum and well air is 1.0003 which is very close to vacuum. All right, so what is C? Lambda times F. So let's consider the red light since we are fighting in red. So what is the lambda for red light? Let's see. V is equal to lambda is 700 nanometer. 700 nanometer is 700 times 10 raised to 10 raised to negative 9. And frequency for red light is 4.3 times 4.3 times 10 raised to 14. So then V is 3 times 10 raised to 8 meter per second. Of course, light moves 3 times 10 raised to 8 meter per second in where? In the vacuum, all right? Or even in the year because the year N is very close to 1 and is 1.003. Now, what happens when light goes through the medium? Here, light has no medium, vacuum is no medium. Here, light has a medium when light goes through the water. Of course, of course, it's going to slow down. It's not going to be 3 times 10 raised. It's going to be much slower than that. Let's find out how much slower than that. So, N is 1.33. So, V is v is c is 3 times 10 raised to 8 of course that's where we got it from and 1.33 so v is 2.55 times 10 raised to 8 meter per second so of course in the vacuum light does not move at in the water light does not move as far as light moves in the vacuum this has a special notation and that's c all right, now we're going to talk about standing wave. The difference between this is the wave. It does not have any beginning or any end. However, a standing wave has beginning and end. How? Because if we put, if we put a barrier, 
over here at the both end we call it barrier we can create something called a standing wave because at the barrier the string does not move so we, ca we call no motion all right but there was a protest coming from the music uh, industry they did not like the p physicist chosen uh, term no motion so they protest and the physicists listen they propose physicists accept now we don't call no motion we call node consider a guitar so a guitar has a string and we're gonna call a string L we have one anti node how many anti node over here okay one and two anti node how many anti node over here one two and three three anti node okay so if we put this one over here let's see how would that look like so make it long if we put this one that would look like this one the anti node over here is this one and these are the node so there are two nodes and one anti node anti node is when the wave has a maximum displacement from this point to this point okay so what is the wavelength over here let's see the wavelength l is the wavelength is the half lambda so lambda is lambda is lambda is 2l lambda is 2l so now we have the one and two anti node of course we have two anti node and one two three node when the incident ray hit the barrier over there it bounced back with equal magnitude but opposite direction making it look like a standing wave that's why we call it a standing wave now what is the length is the lambda and what is the what is the lambda lambda is equal to length now let's consider one more let's consider this one if we put this one over here now let's see how this gonna look like bounce back with same magnitude equal but opposite direction making it look like a standing wave so in this case what is the length length is 3 over 2 lambda so then what is lambda in this case three so what do we get you can put one over here multiply top and bottom by two so lambda is 2l over 2 lambda is uh, 2l over 3 so 2l over 1 2l over 2 2l over 3 so we can write that the lambda for harmonics is lambda for harmonics because standing wave creates harmonics is 2l over n and n is the anti-node.